President Trump's morning began as it always does, watching his favorite TV show, where he was told that Omarosa has outsmarted him. In order to sell a book, uh, she's come out with a series of tapes and in many ways seems to have outsmarted the president who has who's taken the bait and gone out and tweeted directly after her. Imagine Donald Trump's panic this morning when his friends at Fox and Friends declared Omarosa the winner in her battle with the president. Was that the moment that convinced Donald Trump that he had to change the story of the day? Is that why the president struck out at John Brennan today and removed his security clearance today, something he could have done at any time. The question of the day at the White House press briefing today was going to be about the president using the N-word. Here's NBC's Kristen Welker just before the briefing started today. The other big question that we tried to get to in this briefing room yesterday, uh, is there in fact a tape in which President Trump, when he was a citizen, used the N-word? Sarah Sanders saying that, look, she would refer us to the president's statement in which he denies it, but saying that she hadn't had a chance to ask him herself. Has she at that point? That's one of the critical questions. But the briefing was not filled with questions about the president's racism because of the president's dramatic announcement about removing John Brennan's security clearance. And so is that the end of it? Or did Donald Trump simply get one day off from Omarosa's accusations? Omarosa is scheduled to be back on TV tomorrow. The story she has created has already transcended Omarosa and her book and is all about Donald Trump's history of racism. When we come back after this break, listen to what Donald Trump said about being black in 1989. We do not have a recording of Donald Trump using the N-word, but we do have this video from 43-year-old Donald Trump in 1989. I've said to one occasion, even about myself, if I were starting off today, I would love to be a well-educated black because I really believe they do have an actual advantage today. And joining our discussion now, Franklin Leonard, a film executive and founder of The Blacklist, and Jason Johnson is back with us. Uh, And Franklin Leonard, there's Donald Trump in 1989 saying, I would love to be a well-educated black because I really believe they do have an actual advantage today. Any hints of racism in that? Um, I mean, look, I've said for several years now that when you're accustomed to privilege, equality feels like oppression, but it is not. Uh, And I think what's most remarkable about this is that we're not even talking about equality in any practical sense. We're talking about the hints of the beginning of progress towards equality. And yet in 1989 and still in 2018, you hear this sort of victimization narrative uh, from the White House and also really animating the entire white supremacist movement in this country. Um, But... It, it, look, I'm very happy to be what I would imagine that uh, Donald Trump would consider a well-educated black, uh, but there's no evidence to back up that claim. Uh, I think Dr. Sandy Darity at Duke has actually done amazing work uh, sort of disputing the myth that education solves the, the, the wealth gap in this country. Uh, being a well-educated black, we'll assume that means a college graduate, roughly uh, equates in terms of median income to being a high school dropout if you're white. Uh, I also think it's notable that this this quote, this interview came, I believe it's late 1989, which is roughly contemporaneous with Trump's uh, public comments about the Central Park Five. So at the same time, he's claiming he would rather be a well-educated black. He's also calling for maximum punishment for five black men who were innocent of a crime. uh, And we know that now. Uh, Professor Jason Johnson, uh, I think he was talking about you, if I'm listening to him, uh, and, and Harvard graduate Franklin Leonard. Uh, but, but listen to what uh, John O'Donnell, who I'm not related to, who uh, worked for Donald Trump, uh, what he wrote in his book uh, called Trump about Donald Trump. And this is about Donald Trump's own attitude toward educated black men working in his business. Uh, he, there's a passage where in, in the book where O'Donnell writes, uh, quotes Trump saying, black guys counting my money. I hate it. I think that the guy is lazy and it's probably not his fault because laziness is a trait in blacks. And so that's how the black accountants were treated in one of Donald Trump's casinos when he actually saw an educated black man working as an accountant. 
yeah, imagine what he thinks of non-educated black people. I mean, like, I guess Omarosa or Ben Carson. Look, th here's the thing about Donald Trump. It's, it's not just that he's a racist, right? That's already a given. It's that he's even more racist than people that we know are racist. He got sued by the Nixon administration for housing discrimination. I mean, like, Nixon came up with the Southern strategy. You know, he picked Jeff Sessions to be his attorney general. Jeff Sessions was too racist for Republicans 30 years ago. I, I mean, you know, in, in his explanation that, well, I haven't said this word or this, that, or the other. Look, at the end of the day, we don't need a tape to know that Donald Trump is racist. I was at the Unite the Right rally in Washington, D.C. on Sunday. I didn't hear anybody say the N-word, but I'm pretty sure those guys were still racist. So the, the idea that he can hide or dance around this or that he makes some distinction between educated and non-educated black people is an absolute lie. Uh, Franklin Leonard, a, a wise man of show business who worked with Donald Trump in the entertainment business, knows him very well, uh, said to me today that there's absolutely no doubt uh, that Donald Trump uh, pulled his move on uh, John Brennan today to change the subject uh, from Omarosa and, fr and make sure that the questions today were not about, uh, is there a recording of Donald Trump using the N-word? I mean, of course he did. I mean, this is the playbook we see time and time again. Something happens. Uh, we got to have a distraction. It's fascinating that they, they have them on file now, ready to go, undated, ready to release. Um, and I'm sure we'll see it many more times. Well, because of their incompetence, it actually was dated, and it was dated July 26th. We actually see on the document that they've been <laughs> yeah. sitting with this since July 26th, waiting for the day they needed to block something. And, uh, and Franklin, it seems that Omarosa was what they needed to block the most. I mean, look, I think this is just typical of the incompetence of the administration. On some level, I think I'm happy about it because it means that we actually find out the things that we need to find out. But uh, just as the hiring of Omarosa indicates incompetence, the, the sort of trail that she left throughout the administration would indicate that as well. This is, this is par for the course. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.